Welcome to this episode of Dev Questions with Tim Corey. Join us as we tackle the questions you are asking about a career in software development, understanding the industry, and new technology. Now, here's your host, expert developer and online educator, Tim Corey. How do I get started in open source development? It seems so intimidating to look at open source and saying, where do I even start? Well, the good news is there is a way to start small, start simple, and kind of build your momentum to the point where you're a full-fledged contributor to open source development. And I think really good for both your career because you'll be uh, actually writing code. You'll be contributing code you can show off to employers, but you'll also be making contact with people and starting to build a network of community that knows who you are and knows that you contribute back. It's also good because you are giving back to the community and you're helping out and helping out is a benefit to everyone, including yourself. So how do you start small in open source development? Well, first of all, I would not start with creating your own repository. That's kind of a later step. And the reason why is you need, you need to get the flow of how this works. That way you understand kind of the pitfalls to avoid, the things that you should put in practice, the best practices and so on. So start small on somebody else's repository. Find a repository that you wanna to contribute to, maybe one that you use in your everyday life or that you just understand well. And then look to see what small changes you could make. Maybe you find some typos. Well, you can actually fix those. Fix the typos, create a pull request, get that process down where you understand, okay, I create a pull request, here's how it works. I've, you know, I clone the repository, I fork the repository and clone the repository, I make the change, I wrap it all up, I submit as a pull request, I get it reviewed, I get it merged. That kind of process, start small on it. Just get to understand the, the basics of how that works and kind of build up a little bit of momentum. Then maybe look at the documentation. Documentation is always something that can use improvements. There's very, very few projects out there that have documented well, and even they can use some additional documentation. So look at the documentation and figure out where there are some weaknesses. Ask yourself the question, if I didn't know this so well, would I understand what to do next? Would I understand when I should do something? And then create additional documentation, use examples, create small code samples, and then build a documentation piece and then create a pull request for that. And that's gonna give you an additional step where you're actually helping others out, not just with fixing a typo, which is important, but not huge, but now you're actually making the community better because they're more, they can more easily use the tool that you're contributing to. And by doing that, you make the tool more popular. Because when I go and find a tool online and there's no documentation, I almost never use it because I don't know where to start. I don't know what the reason for the tool ex existing is. I don't know why I'd use this tool versus another tool. So I'll just skip it. And if a documentation is poor, I might start trying to use it and then get frustrated because I don't understand what to do next or how to fix this bug or, or why this doesn't work. And then I'll just stop using it because I don't have time to learn all or go through all the source code of, of maybe a small tool to understand it when I have so many other things to do. So good documentation is huge. Now, after that, may look for the tags in or the labels in the issue list, things like up for grabs or first timer. Look for things like that where they are encouraging new developers to jump on board and help out. And they're saying, hey, this, you can go ahead and do this. This is maybe it's a first timer tag and first timer tags are great. Because what they're saying is that not only is this a fix, it's probably a little easier to do, but it's also something that they're gonna help you with. Because when you submit a pull request, it's not just as simple as here's the code, go ahead and merge it in. You've got to do more than that. You've got to 
conform to the rules of how they're looking for the code to be set up. Do they have unit testing? Have you run that? Do you need to write new unit tests? All those kind of things are important to understand. And so that first timer tag especially is going to help you kind of show off, hey, I'm not real comfortable yet doing these things. So I'm starting here first and people will help you walk through the process of submitting that pull request, getting it right and getting it merged. Now with that, I recommend that you look for completed pull requests to see the pattern, look at, at what the pattern was where the person said, okay, I'm going to work on this. I am working on this. I have completed this and how they tag things, what uh, things they bring in or do, what pattern they follow and so on. Also look for submission guidelines. Usually projects will say, this is how we want you to submit pull requests. These are the steps we want you to take. Make sure you follow those. All right. So conform to the project, conform to how they want things done and make sure that your, your help is actually a help. Don't just fix their formatting because if you fix their formatting to fix, to fit your perspective, that's getting rejected. Okay. Do something that actually helps the project and makes it better in some way. Now from there, work up to larger fixes, like actually fixing bugs, go through the issue list and say, Hey, could I figure that one out and try and fix a few bugs? And then maybe look for, again, small features that have been requested. Maybe it's a small tweak that really is bothering someone and that no one has time to really delve into. Figure it out, fix it, or add that feature. And then also performance improvements. Look to see, hey, you know what? I see they're using, you know, maybe in C Sharp, it's adding two strings together and they're doing it a lot. Maybe we can look at String Builder. Would that make their performance better in this particular spot? Don't just change the code. Make sure you test it to make sure it actually does improve performance. But with that, you could make the repository better. So that's a little bit larger fixes, you know, bug fixes, small features, performance improvements. These are things you can do next after you get that ball rolling. Now, here's some tips when you're working with open source, especially with somebody else's project work with the owners or admins. Don't try and go off on your own. You are not the boss. They are act like it. I have seen a number of people who've tried to force their own way and say, well, this way is better. It doesn't matter if it is or not. The fact that you are going against your boss to do it isn't going to work out for you. Okay. Treat them with respect. They are the owner. Do it the way they want. Talk to them, ask if this is the way they want it done. Ask if you can do something. Okay. And then don't take rejection personally. You're not the owner of this project. They are, you're not the one that has to maintain it. They are, you're not the one that has to deal with the long-term consequences of a potential action. There are times when a good short-term solution might be a bad long-term solution. Maybe, uh, for instance, you could bring in a third party library to solve this problem and you get rejected. And the reason why is because we don't want to take dependency in that library. Well, you may argue, yeah, but that fixes the problem. It does in the short term, but now every, every client, every person who uses their package has to take an additional dependency. And that might not be okay. And it might even not allow the project to be used in certain circumstances. So short term, it might be good. Long term, it might be bad. Trust the owner of admin. Don't take the rejection personally. It's not about you. It's about how they are trying to shepherd their project through. Okay. And then don't argue. Okay. If you don't agree, fine. You don't agree. Don't argue about it. Okay. This is not your project. And if you want to make your own project, then at that point, go ahead and do, but don't just argue with people because what you're doing is you're actually hurting the project, not helping it. 
Because remember, these are all people who are donating their time. Don't just cause them more frustration and grief. Okay. So these are tips to help you better work with other product owners and work better in open source. Now stick with one repository for a while. So if you're helping out one repository, don't skip around, stick with that repository, make it better. Start with those, uh, you know, typo fixes or documentation, move into bug fixes, small features, but really help out that repository because you're going to not only be contributing to open source, you'll also be building a reputation in the community. That reputation can open doors for you that you might not even be thinking about. So if you lose your job and you were to tell the people there, you built a relationship with, Hey, I lost my job. Or maybe they start following you on Twitter and they find out, Hey, you lost your job. Hey, you know what? They probably work at other organizations and maybe they say, Hey, you know what? This person's a great employee. They know C sharp inside and out because they've been working with me for X number of years. And you might find yourself in a better situation because you were contributing to open source and building that reputation. Now don't get discouraged by setbacks. They're going to happen. This is the way it is in jobs too. Okay. So don't get discouraged by that. It's okay. Just keep moving forward. If you have to switch to a different repository, do so, but try and build that reputation up of being a positive, encouraging, helpful member of the community, not a negative, discouraging, tearing down, uh, thorn the flesh for the community. Okay. That positive positivity and help is going to push you a whole lot further forward. Okay. So thanks for listening to this week's episode of dev questions. I hope that answered the question of how you get started in open source development. If you have a question about being a developer, check out the previous episodes, either on YouTube where it's a video podcast or on your podcast app of choice, where it's just a audio podcast as well. Thanks for listening. And as always, I am Tim Corey.